Welcome to Sustainability Bridges, a Eurosif podcast that aims to build bridges between policymakers, investors, academics, and civil society around the theme of sustainable investment. Eurosif, the European Sustainable Investment Forum, is the leading pan European association promoting sustainable finance and investment at the European level. In these podcasts, Eurosif's executive director invites distinguished guests for a 30 minute conversation on current events shaping the sustainable investment community. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alexandra Palinska and I am the executive director of Eurosif. For this episode of Sustainability Bridges, I am honored to be joined by Mr. Filip Zawati, founder and CEO of Mirova, a leading sustainable investment and asset management firm. Mirova is a pioneer in sustainable finance and has developed its own international recognized certification system, the B Corp certification label. Together, we are going to discuss the European Sustainability Reporting Standards, ESRS, Global Sustainability Reporting Standards developed by ISP, the Corporate Sustainability Due Diligence Directive, and the evolution of the Sustainable Finance Regulatory Framework in the EU and beyond. Dear Philip, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Alexandra. To start with, could you please tell us about Mirova and the company's mission and its commitment to investing sustainably? Yes, of course. Uh, so Mirova is a, a relatively uh, a young company. I mean, we created it uh, 10 years ago and uh, uh, with the, uh, the objective to, uh, to create a company fully dedicated to responsible investments so that uh, what we, uh, we have I mean, been doing these last 10 years, investing in different asset classes from uh, listed equities to uh, private equity, but always with the objective to, uh, to create a positive environmental and social impact. So today we, we manage uh, around 30 billion euros. We are 250 people based in Paris, London, Boston, Nairobi, Lima, and Singapore. And, uh, and we uh, are, I mean, fully committed to, uh, to the uh, um, evolution of uh, sustainable investments. Uh, and so that's it. Thank you. As CEO of an asset management firm, could you please share with us what are the main challenges fund managers face when making investment decisions, especially while wishing to invest sustainably? Oh, we uh, we are facing a lot of challenges. I mean, of course, <laughs> the world is uh, the world of investments is difficult, uh, but uh, at the same time, there are also a lot of opportunities in this new uh, challenging world. Uh, so uh, the idea of Mirova was to create a a proof of concept that it was possible to, to, to manage money at a large scale, uh, but, uh, but always with this uh, sustainability in mind. But today, we, we, we are uh, the, the most important uh, difficulty that, that we, we are facing is that uh, the, um, the mainstreaming of uh, ESG and, and responsible investments uh, has been, of course, a, a very good news these last years, but at the same time, it has created a, a kind of confusion in the market uh, with a, a lot of difficulties to, uh, to define uh, clearly what uh, sustainability means, uh, with a lot of new regulation coming on, uh, and also uh, uh, with a, a lot of, uh, let's say, a, a lot of pushback, I mean, uh, and, uh, and attacks from, uh, from the business as usual uh, lobbies. So, uh, so yes, we we are uh, navigating uh, in in into this this new world, into this space, and uh, and so uh, uh, the, what we try to do today is to uh, stick on our on our commitments, stick on our convictions, and try to explain to the market that there is a wide range uh, within uh, responsible investments, and that uh, investors should. Uh, I mean, look at it more carefully and, and try to understand much more what it means and uh, how, how the, the, the different offers can stick to, uh, can, I mean, can fit with their uh, objectives. Uh, so that's probably the, the, the different difficulties that we are facing today. Thank you. That's um, very helpful. Um, now, moving on to the corporate sustainability reporting. What are your thoughts on the latest developments on corporate sustainability reporting at EU and global level? In particular, what are your views on the latest changes introduced by the European Commission to the final draft first set of the European sustainability reporting standards that were consulted on until 7th of July? 
So CSRD is, of course, uh, very important for us as, as investors. I mean, uh, we, we have our own regulation, uh, as, you, uh, as you may know. I mean, the SFD, SFDR regulation, which uh, requires us to, uh, to be very uh, um, uh, transparent about, uh, about our portfolios and to, uh, and to uh, disclose a lot of uh, um, data uh, around uh, the, the footprint of our portfolios and the different uh, uh, measures, uh, impact measures on our, on, on our portfolio. I mean, to do this, we uh, uh, of course need to get the data uh, mainly from corporate, from the companies. Uh, and so uh, uh, of the, uh, it's uh, very important to have a kind of coherence between uh, the, the, the regulation on the, on the financial side and the regulation on the corporate side. Uh, because at the, same, at the end of the day, this is data that we, that, that we have to use. Uh, so, uh, to a certain extent, the fact that we had the financial regulation before the corporate reporting regulation was uh, to, well, a little bit tricky uh, because we had to start reporting without the data coming from, from the company. But anyway, it's not a, a big deal. We, uh, we, 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 we can use uh, estimates for, for, for a, couple of, a couple of months or years, but it's very important now to, to look at this uh, CSRD uh, directive. So what's going on uh, in, uh, um, around this? Uh, there was a lot of uh, concerns and, uh, uh, around this directive because we, uh, we were uh, very concerned about the fact that uh, the uh, European Commission could uh, um, I mean, uh, be a very uh, I mean, weaken a lot uh, the, 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 the directive when uh, issuing the, the, the standard, the ESRS standard. Uh, and, and the reason why we were a little bit uh, con concerned about this was because there was a, a very strong pushback from the, uh, the big uh, industrial lobbies and also from the ISSB, which is the International uh, Regulation Standard. And all these guys were clearly pushing uh, the, the commission to focus only on climate and to let aside all the other um, uh, objectives, I mean, around uh, biodiversity, uh, human rights, socials, and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and finally, we, uh, we were very happy that uh, finally the, the European Commission clearly uh, uh, was quite strong uh, in, uh, I mean, refusing to, uh, to give up on, on, on these objectives and finally issued all the uh, standards uh, from climate to, uh, to human rights. Uh, and, and so that was a good news. So that, that was the first important thing to say. Uh, so now we, we have these, uh, all these standards that, and they, they probably should be uh, fully, uh, um, uh, be fully adopted in, in the coming months. At the same time, uh, of course, uh, these standards have been uh, uh, weakened on uh, at least uh, uh, two aspects. Uh, the first one, uh, well, uh, is the fact that uh, uh, some of the companies, I mean, the small and mid companies, um, will have more time uh, to uh, to fulfill the, these requirements, uh, and we think that, but uh, but that, that was not really necessary. Uh, so that that was the first point, um, and uh, and the second one uh, is more important is the fact that. Uh, the companies uh, would be able not to report if they think that uh, the, the, this or, or, or those criteria is not material for them. So when I say material, is of course material on both sides. It's clearly it's still the double, what we call double materiality. That means the impact on this topic on the financials of the company, but also the impact of the company on these topics. Uh, so that's good. That's, uh, that, that's clearly a, a, an excellent point on, uh, in, in the European regulation. But still, uh, if the company feels that uh, this criteria, let's say, I don't know, biodiversity, uh, is not material for them, they could uh, not report on this topic. Uh, which, uh, we, I mean, of course, we, this is weakening a lot the, 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 re the reporting, and we would prefer to have at least some of these criteria, and I'm thinking more especially uh, of the, the climate part of the uh, of the reporting, 
we would have preferred to uh, to to have uh, an obligation. I mean that it, uh, it's still compulsory for for the company to to report. So these are the two uh, most important uh, weakening part of the uh, of the CSRD uh, uh, last uh, issue uh, European Commission issue. And so we will continue to, uh, I mean, to to lobby and to uh, and 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 to say to the European Commission what we what we think they uh, they they should do. I uh, just signed uh, this week uh, uh, an open letter, a tribune. Uh, um, with uh, uh, about 20 uh, other big uh, uh, CEOs uh, in France, and so we, I mean, we are a lot. Uh, I mean, push, pushing, of course, this uh, this agenda. Thank you, Philip. Indeed, a uh, very important um, topic. Um, maybe also just very briefly touching upon some of the uh, details and aspects of it. Also, um, as you mentioned, actually, one of the main, I would say aspects which are tricky right now is that in the latest final draft delegated acts uh, actually there is no more mandatory indicators right and on one hand side the explanation for that was that companies need to run uh, the materiality assessment you know based on the double materiality principle so it's not like these disclosures would be voluntary however would you still be concerned to what extent actually companies will always actually run the double materiality assessment thoroughly, especially that dub double materiality is actually quite a new concept as well? Uh, of course, now EFRAC is also developing a guidance to eventually help companies, but of course, we, we it's still unclear to what extent this guidance will be, I would say, sufficiently detailed uh, in and, you know, I would say enough for companies, especially those that might be doing this kind of reporting for the first time to, to be able to run this process, you know, sm smoothly and, and thoroughly. And uh, at the end of the day, it also probably puts, you know, quite a lot of importance of the work that will be done by the consultants and also by the auditors. A, well, to, to help companies prepare these disclosures and also with the materiality assessment process, but at the same time also in terms of verifying whether uh, the, you know, this process has been done thoroughly. So what are our views on that? And, and do you think it might be particularly tricky also in the context of SFDR, climate benchmarks and, you know, other reporting obligations whereby indeed probably it would be more helpful if all companies would be disclosing a certain data set. Yes, I mean, I, I, I fully, fully agree with uh, all what you, all what you say. I mean, clearly, uh, the, this, this is going to be a, a, a transition. I mean, uh, in all principles, uh, we are, uh, as investors, we, we, we are happy with the, the concept of materiality uh, because we, we don't want, uh, on the other hand, to be. Uh, uh, overhand with uh, a lot of data which are uh, useless or which doesn't mean anything for 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 the for the company. So uh, so on the principle, it's 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 a, it's a good idea. Uh, so now we have to uh, to implement the, this uh, I mean correctly and, and efficiently. Uh, so uh, and 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 to do this, we need we need a lot of guidance clearly, uh, and more especially we need. Uh, uh, sector and industry guidance. I think for some industries uh, or some in some sectors, it, it it's uh, I mean would, would be a, an evidence that, for example, uh, climate uh, climate disclosure is necessary. Uh, and 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 so I, I think we uh, we will clearly need uh, more more details uh, coming from the commissions, but maybe uh, also from regulators or or, or maybe uh, also industry led. Initiatives, so uh, so we we clearly have to to strengthen all, all this in the, in the in the coming months. Thank you. And uh, what are your views on the standards developed by ISB? I mean, do you do you find them, I would say, uh, sufficiently helpful and and ambitious? I mean, uh, so first, I, I I don't I don't know the 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 work in detail, so I can I cannot tell you uh, technically. Uh, uh, I don't have technical advice or a technical vision of of this. But the fact that there is a, a global and standard way to to measure and to and to report on 
on topics like climate, biodiversity, and so on, is of course a very good thing. I mean, we cannot, uh, we cannot at the end of the day, only uh, rely on a uh, European regulation. Uh, it, it has to be global at a, at a certain extent. Uh, so, uh, so I think, yeah, we are welcoming welcoming the the the, the work uh, at the at the global level, uh, and and I think that technically the world is is well done because they are, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, using all the, the the different right tools like GRI you know, and 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 other uh, reporting uh, um, tools, um, but of course. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the only big issue is that it's a, it's a, uh, it's a simple materiality uh, uh, initiative, I mean, standard. So, uh, so uh, clearly uh, explained by Emmanuel Faber itself. So they start by assessing all the different uh, impacts and then they filter it uh, through the financial materiality lens. That means that they uh, will require the company only to report on what is financially material for the, for, for, for the companies. So this is really uh, very important and, uh, and, and we, uh, it's much more, it's very important in some of, of the, uh, of the philo philosophy of, of, of all this and, and, and the way it's, uh, it's impacting the, uh, the, the, um, the conduct, I mean, the way, the, way the, 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 the big uh, companies and, and the CEOs and the management of these companies are behaving and, uh, and developing their strategy. So uh, it's very important if the message is you only have to to uh, to, to look at at your financial and at uh, at the impact on on your business and all these uh, we, the only thing we have to rely on is the economy and the markets we we clearly uh, are not going in the right direction i mean we we know i mean now for sure that the economy itself and and the market itself will not solve the issues we are facing that's for sure i mean we have been exper ex experiencing these uh, for years uh, we need much more regulation we need a uh, clear standard and we need to uh, make uh, the, the the big uh, uh, companies uh, top management understand that they have a responsibility on uh, on the, uh, the general interest on climate, on uh, on environment, on, on inequalities. Uh, so it's not only uh, about measuring the, uh, the 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 impacts. It's about I mean feeling themselves responsible of the world around them. I think this is very well said and and, and very important uh, indeed. And do you think in this actually context, it would be useful that ISB actually revisits its understanding of what they refer to as investor materiality? Because actually, you know, through the kind of single materiality, financial materiality lens, they seem to be, you know, often referring to investor materiality, saying information that is actually material for investors, However, making the link, you know, with, I would say, the definitions and concepts they have developed in the context of financial reporting. So yeah. do you think it would be useful that they actually revisit the notion of the investor materiality saying, well, look, actually, nowadays, investors are not only interested necessarily in financial results, but are also they need to understand the sustainability risks, which, of course, at the end of the day, have um, financially material implications. However, at the same time, there is a growing number of investors that are interested in the impact materiality, right? So do you think this is the angle that actually could be also helpful to explore? Uh, yes, that could, could be one. I, uh, so the, 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 the first and most probably more, more uh, urgent uh, thing to, to, to do is to, uh, to make sure that the uh, ISSB is not uh, a problem for the, uh, for the European regulation. So that means that, that the European con uh, regulation continue to move forward and to, uh, and to develop its, uh, its standards. And also to, uh, to uh, make it uh, as easy as possible, uh, as simple as possible for the companies to report on both standards, I mean, uh, EU uh, uh, CSRD and ISSB, uh, because we will have more and more companies saying, I don't want to report on two standards, I, I want only one, and we know what, what, it's mean, uh, what, what it means. I mean, it means that they only want to report on ISSB. 
the, the fact that uh, the, the connection, I mean, these two standards and uh, and the way they uh, they can uh, speak to each other, uh, it's a it's a, it's the first important thing. I mean, more, probably urgent. Then uh, you write uh, about the the, uh, the investors. Uh, the problem is that uh, it's just at, at at the same time where there is a big. Uh, battle and, and controversy uh, on, on, on the uh, investor side as well. Uh, and all the discussion around the um, fiduciary duty in the US uh, and uh, regulation around ESG, uh, which was uh, uh, passed uh, at the Congress and then with the veto of Biden uh, these last months. I mean, uh, I mean it, has, it, it clearly uh, uh, has become a, a kind of very political, uh, political fight in the US. Uh, and so clearly, uh, uh, what investors should do is also uh, a discussion on the table. So I don't know if uh, if we can uh, deal this kind of controversy through the ISSB or outside the ISSB, and if the ISSB and, and it will, if it will be only a consequence for the ISSB moving forward. I, I, I don't know, but clearly um, the role of the investors. And uh, the development of the impact investing uh, is is key, uh, not only for the investing side, but of course it will be key for the uh, transparency and, and 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 regulation on the on the corporate side as well. Thank you. Uh, now moving on to the uh, corporate sustainability due diligence uh, directive that is currently um, well being negotiated. It, um, by uh, the EU institutions, the co-legislators, and uh, recently entered the so-called trilogue negotiations whereby the Commission, Parliament and the Council are trying to find uh, a compromise they can all live with. Uh, in particular, do you think we need binding net zero targets and transition plans? I mean, an obligation for large companies to set and implement uh, climate targets and transition plans, as well as in general corporate due diligence uh, obligation uh, to run through value chain. And uh, what do you think about, uh, well, a provision which is uh, probably a little bit more controversial even than that, meaning linking a proportion of directors' variable remuneration with corporate uh, climate and other sustainability targets. Do you think it could be an interesting incentive for corporate executives to pursue climate and other sustainability goals? On the first, first part of your question, I mean, on principles, yes, we think that we, we, we need um, clearly uh, to have uh, more information about the, the trajectory and the, and the strategy of the company in terms of the, 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 the way they, they are going to, uh, to go to net zero. It was not. It was not really the, the purpose of the of, of this law at the beginning. Uh, so uh, I'm o- always a little bit concerned about the uh, the, the way the legislations uh, are discussed and, uh, and and negotiated and, and and approved, and and the fact that there are a lot of overlaps between the different directives. Uh, I, I'm not sure that this is the best way to uh, to uh, I mean to get clear. Uh, Directions and information to the to the di- different players. So uh, I mean, anyway, we we use these to uh, to to push to to push this kind of uh, of requirements on, on climate. It's not it's it's okay. Uh, but uh, again, I, I, I would prefer to have uh, some very uh, clear uh, objectives. I mean, uh, uh, in uh, each directive, because at the end of the day, uh, if we of course, we 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 should put climate everywhere everywhere, but uh, at, the end of, at the end of the day, it could become some a little bit fuzzy and and, and difficult to understand for companies. So I uh, I I have to to, to say that, uh, and uh, uh, and so these uh, CSSD directive is so important in terms of due diligence on other topics uh, that uh, uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, like to. Uh, to have all the the, the the focus and the controversies uh, focused on the on, on the on the climate topic on on, on this directive, uh, but anyway, uh, in, in, uh, uh, regarding your, the second part of your question, uh, in, 
uh, about the, the, the link between uh, due diligence uh, and, and compensations uh, and, and uh, management compensation, uh, we, we, of course, uh, clearly uh, are in favor of this. Uh, we have been pushing this for years. I mean, the different, uh, in the way we, uh, we, we vote on, on the different uh, uh, AGMs or, or, or the companies uh, in which we are uh, in, invested in. I mean, again, that's exactly what I was saying before. I mean, the, the, the top management of companies should understand that they have uh, a responsibility and, uh, and what is the best way to, uh, to make them understand that they have a responsibility by uh, than linking their remuneration to this responsibility. Uh, so, uh, so definitely this is something very, 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 very important, yes. Thank you very much. In terms of, you know, uh, possible duplications, overlaps, I mean, my understanding is that, you see, in a, in a way, corporate sustainability due diligence directive goes hand in hand with corporate sustainability reporting directive. And indeed, here on the, with regards to climate targets and transition plans, the intention is to ensure that in terms of the reporting, it's in line with the European sustainability reporting standards. It was just intended that while the standards, you know, is a disclosure based regulation here kind of with Article 15 to kind of underpin it with, you know, placing a clear obligation, at least for the largest companies to set and implement uh, those targets. But yeah, I fully agree that we should not forget about, you know, the kind of a core objective of, of this directive, meaning the uh, uh, due diligence uh, requirements, which actually in France you have already had for 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 a absolutely. while. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but no, I okay. You 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 know all the this history better than me. But uh, but no, my my just uh, concern is uh, about the way the, the the companies are receiving all these regulations. And so uh, I mean, sometimes uh, we should maybe just. I mean, do what you you, you just you just did, and uh, uh, just explaining the big picture, uh, because they don't they don't get the big big picture. They only uh, only see like you know layers and layers and layers, and uh, uh, and that's not the, the 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 best way to uh, to make them really uh, uh, I mean positive on all, all these new regulations, you know. Indeed, indeed. I, I think I can definitely understand that some companies may feel uh, overwhelmed. And as you mentioned, communication is key and mm. uh, explanations. Now, uh, moving back to more focus on investments, um, especially impact and transition investments that are gaining prominence. What changes do you think we need to the e-regulatory framework to better cater for impact and transition investments and their specificities. Also, do you think there is a need to differentiate between the company and investor impact? Yes, to, to start by, the, by, by your last question, I, I, I think it's, uh, it's very important to, uh, to define uh, what, what it means for an investor to make an impact. This is something that we have, uh, we have probably not worked uh, on uh, enough. These, these last years, uh, and that will clearly lead to uh, understand and measure the impact of an asset managers of asset managers at, at the level of the, of the company of the of the asset manager itself, and not at the level of one investment fund. I, I, I'm not really uh, positive on, on 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 all these measurements, all these uh, uh, definition of impact at the fund level or at the strategy level. Um, and uh, so I think uh, uh, for for an investor, uh, creating an impact is is clearly more a holistic uh, issue. Uh, and so uh, we 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 have to uh, to um, clearly uh, uh, de describe it uh, through all the different tools that an, an investor can have in his hand to make an impact. And these tools are, of course, designing products. Uh, investing, cho choosing the companies in which we, they invest, uh, making an asset allocation, uh, but also, I mean, engaging, voting, uh, engaging with policymakers, engaging with peers, communicating, um, and uh, and all these, I mean, 
together, I mean, um, working for new regulations, uh, uh, developing new methodologies to measure, to, to measure carbon footprint or biodiversity footprint. Um, all this is useful and all this can create an impact. Uh, and then we are also have to, to explain for the different asset classes what it means to make an impact. And, uh, uh, and I mean, we are convinced convinced that uh, that impact investing in not is not only has not to be restricted to very narrow asset classes like uh, uh, investing in uh, in private equity uh, impact private equity or I don't, I don't know I mean uh, restoring mangroves in, <laughs> in in African coast we we, we we think that impact should be uh, all I mean all over the the, the, the investment chain I mean uh, if not, we will we will not succeed. I mean, we, we the, the 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 companies and the projects are using a lot of different tools to finance themselves. And so, if we want to make an impact, we have to uh, to use all these tools differently, from investing in private equity in venture capital to investing in big equity markets as well. And uh, but of course, uh, the kind of impact you 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 make is very different. When you invest in a small private equity uh, venture, uh, it's easy to define exactly what will be the, 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 the different uh, uh, impacts. When you uh, uh, invest uh, and you own 0.2% uh, of, uh, of the shares of big companies, then you have to act differently and to explain how uh, you, 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 could, you could make an, an impact through uh, the evolution of markets. So, uh, yeah, uh, and, and it's very different, of course, of defining what is the impact at the company level because the company has its scope and uh, and its strategy uh, and uh, and and they have to develop their, their strategy uh, thinking about their impact uh, but it's clearly completely different from an investor which is broader i mean in terms of uh, in terms of the the the, uh, the decision, decisions he has to to take thank you and uh, indeed for instance in the context of uh public equity markets, uh, what do you think are the most important tools at the investor disposal to actually, yes, deliver impact through the investments? I mean, how important do you see the role of actually stewardship and engagement in this context? Stewardship and engagement are, are, has uh, for, for long been used as an alibi uh, uh, not to do anything else. Uh, and so I, I'm, I'm, I think uh, engagement is a uh, is important, but we should not think and focus on engagement uh, in order to uh, avoid us to make some big choices in terms of asset allocation and 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 and, uh, and company selection. So if we if you are uh, if you add these two parts, I mean if you work uh, if you use the, them, uh, I mean uh, both. Uh, at the same time to, to, to clearly create an impact, that could be powerful. So this is what we try to do. We, uh, uh, the, the, uh, all these, uh, you know, uh, uh, debate around uh, engagement uh, uh, against divestments is, uh, is a useless debate. I mean, uh, we, of course, when you, when you are an investor, you have to make choices, choices. If you don't choice, if you invest in everything, uh, you cannot have an impact. Uh, but at the same time, you also can choose some of the companies which are not yet um, very, uh, uh, I mean, in the right path, and 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 try to help them to to move forward and uh, and 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 to change uh, their trajectory. And this is what what engagement and and stewardship is uh, is about. Uh, but also, uh, I, I think that when you uh, when you invest in a, in, in listed market in public markets, the important thing is try to. Uh, push and um, to change the behavior of this market. I mean, and, and that, that's more difficult, clearly. Uh, if you look at what, uh, at the way the, the sustainable finance uh, evolved uh, these last uh, 10, 15 years, we have done a lot of, a lot of new things, but uh, at, at the margin of, of the system, but the heart of the system, the heart of the ways, the way the, uh, the, the, the listed and public markets are working is clearly still the same. It's very short. Very short term oriented, uh, and uh, and so uh, we can do to to change this. Of course, is is very important. I mean, uh, uh, for example, I mean uh, clearly uh, pushing for uh, say on climate, for, for for example, is clearly a, a way to to change the behavior of the market. 
integrating new information, creating some collaborative engagement uh, with uh, other, uh, other uh, managers. So that's all the kind of things. Uh, and of course, engaging with policymakers uh, uh, as well to, to, to change the way the, the markets are organized. Thank you. Now, maybe just to spend a, a moment on actually social matters. I mean, I, I know that Mirova has been also quite big, you know, in terms of actually promoting social, in a way, development also through some, you know, targeted investments with positive uh, social impact. Meanwhile, actually, I think if we look at uh, the evolutions at the, you know, in, in terms of the European policy and regulatory space, I think, you know, social aspects have been always probably the more difficult ones, right? And this is probably for, you know, various reasons. I mean, A, you know, in terms of actually environmental matters, of course, you know, we have solid science to kind of back it up. Of course, social aspects, I mean, okay, there are certain things which are clear cut and pretty straightforward, you know, in terms of, for instance, human rights and, you know, human rights violations, whereby we also have the international uh, standards. But, but yes, there are also certain social kind of norms Uh, and aspects which are more, I would say, you know, there, there could be divergences between different uh, countries, different cultures. But yes, I mean, we, we've seen some of the, you know, kind of challenges of addressing actually this uh, social aspects, both in the context of the EU taxonomy, but also in the context of the European sustainability reporting standards. And even, you know, I would say now speaking about the corporate sustainability reporting at uh, international level, I mean, what are your views on that? And, and do you think it's very important to also ensure that we have appropriate disclosures on, on social matters? And what, are, in your view, are the best ways to effectively promote investments with positive social outcomes? So, uh, as you just said, I mean, uh, this is a difficult, difficult part. Uh, this is a difficult part, but let 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 be honest. Uh, the the reason why it, it, it's uh, also the difficult part for for investors, it's because uh, it's clearly more difficult to find investment opportunities, and uh, uh, and opportunities with a, a good risk return profile, uh, and it's clearly not. I mean. That's the most important. I mean, the the reason why environmental and climate finance uh, has developed so well these last 10 years, I mean, is also because we uh, we now have a lot of very very interesting investment opportunities. There is a lot of innovation. There are a lot of new startups. Uh, you can, I mean, you can earn a lot of money. I mean, investing in it. <laughs> let let be let be frank. That that's And so, so uh, we had the chance to uh, to make it possible to uh, to be uh, profitable and responsible at the same time investing in environment, which is clearly much more difficult on the social part, much more difficult. Uh, and so uh, uh, that's the, the the reason why we uh, we we try to 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 find ways to develop this. Uh, there are some uh, interesting topics. Uh, We are, we are focused on uh, on our end, uh, on two topics on the environmental side, climate and biodiversity, biodiversity, and two topics on the social side, what we call human capital, which is basically uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is uh, clearly the way the companies are behaving internally, basically. And then the second uh, second topic is what we call human development, uh, which is basically uh, human well-being. And what we can do to uh, to improve human well well being, which could be health, education, uh, and and all the tools around this, and and I think if you look at these two topics, then you can you can find some interesting opportunities. You can clearly uh, uh, make a link, a clear link between DNI DNI behavior and uh, and the performance of the companies. Which could be uh, one 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 way to uh, to show that uh, it makes sense to invest in companies with good uh, good diversity and inclusion uh, policies, and and then on the other hand, uh, the good news is that we have today more and more also opportunities and innovation in in this in the space of new uh, societal 
tools and and uh, and uh, and solutions. Most of them, I mean, using uh, technology and AI and all, all, all these kind of things. But that could make a link between investments again and and social. I, I'm not speaking about uh, uh, ethics and responsibility in this, but I think we, we we should also understand what 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 it means for investors because at the end of the day, that that the reason why uh, uh, these uh, these tools are developing or not. So that I think we we, we can prove it and move forward. Uh, in terms of the of disclosure, it's probably uh, more difficult. Uh, so so we'll see uh, if the European uh, the EU uh, can can move forward on all of this. But uh, but but it will be uh, clearly uh, difficult. I I I don't think there will ever be a, a social taxonomy, for example. For example, I mean, it's clearly uh, uh, clearly so different from from what we have done for, on on the environmental side. So. Uh, then maybe to uh, add a last thing on this, there is a question of uh, uh, the big, I think, question on uh, of inequalities, which is for me the biggest question on the social social side, and it's very very difficult to assess the impact of companies on inequalities, uh, and and that's a pity because I, I think we. And there is a, str a so strong link between be between this topic and also climate and biodiversity and, and climate and biodiversity and environment. I mean, we can see we we will not succeed in uh, in facing climate change if we do not succeed in facing inequalities, and not only inequalities within our countries, developed countries, but also inequalities between developed countries and developing countries. That, that's the key point. I mean. Uh, if we uh, do not face this uh, this issue, we, we we I mean, climate will be clearly uh, I mean something uh, on the side, and uh, uh, we we won't succeed in uh, in what we uh, what what we uh, want to do on, on on climate side. Thank you, Philip. Now moving on to the next last question: What are your views on further developing the sustainable finance agenda in the EU and beyond? What do you think should be the priorities for the next? European Commission post uh, the EU elections plan for June next year. First, uh, we, we we clearly need to, to implement <laughs> all the uh, we uh, all, all the different uh, regulation which has been uh, uh, passed and voted these last years. Some are some are are efficient. Some are, are maybe less efficient. I am thinking, for example, about the MIFID uh, one on. Uh, uh, social environmental pre preferences for for retail investors, which clearly doesn't work that uh, that much. Uh, so we we need to implement it and maybe uh, improve uh, the different regulation uh, in order that to to make them really efficient. So I think this is clearly the most important priority uh, uh, at the beginning, and and clearly not stop uh, regulating. There is no way uh, oppose. Uh, is uh, is necessary. Uh, we cannot cannot make a pause uh, because all these topics are uh, evolving. What I would like the regulation to be is clearly much, much more strategic and flexible. Uh, strategic in the sense that I think we the regulators should have an objective and then do test and learn with regulation. Put some regulation on the table. And then uh, see how the market is reacting to these regulations and then make it evolve. Thank you, Philip, for joining us today and for this insightful conversation. Thank you, Alexandra.